Any car that bears this symbol is built with careful precision, and it has a reputation for excellent performance and long life. But neither excellent performance nor long life can be attained without the conscientious work of the Volkswagen mechanic, making routine checks and adjustments. If these simple jobs are done on schedule, most major repairs can be avoided altogether. One of the few necessary routine adjustments is adjusting the valves. The car cannot run properly if the valves are not accurately adjusted. A review of the principles of the four-stroke cycle engine will show why this is so. The four-stroke cycle engine is so called because it takes four up or down movements of a piston to complete one cycle. These strokes are the power stroke, the exhaust stroke, the intake stroke, and the compression stroke. This simple one-cylinder engine can help illustrate the system. The piston, inside an enclosed cylinder, is driven down by the expanding gases of a burning mixture of gasoline and air. This reciprocating, or up and down action, is transmitted to the crankshaft by a connecting rod, where it is changed to the rotary motion necessary to drive the car. So, at the end of the power stroke, the piston is at bottom dead center, and the crankshaft has rotated 180 degrees, or one half circle. Momentum carries the crankshaft around another 180 degrees which drives the piston back to top dead center. During this return stroke, the exhaust stroke, the byproducts of combustion, water vapor, carbon dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, and any unburned fuel are pushed from the cylinder through an opened exhaust valve. At this point, the exhaust valve closes and the intake valve opens while the revolution of the crankshaft continues and the piston goes down. During the 180 degrees of the intake stroke, a low pressure is created in the cylinder, drawing fuel and air from the carburetor in through the open intake valve. At bottom dead center, the intake valve closes. Now we have a cylinder charged with fuel and air both valves closed and ready for the compression stroke. During the compression stroke, the fuel-air mixture, having no place to go, will be compressed or squeezed so that at top dead center, it is one-seventh of its original volume. At this point, we ignite the compressed fuel-air mixture and begin the power stroke of the next cycle. The highly compressed fuel-air mixture starts to expand and pushes down forcefully on the piston. It's this compression and expansion which gives us our power. So far, we've been talking about a one-cylinder engine, which for many reasons would not be satisfactory in a modern automobile. The four cylinders of a Volkswagen are timed 180 degrees apart. In other words, the crankshaft is so arranged that when two cylinders are at bottom dead center, the other two have to be at top dead center. One of the two at top dead center is ready to begin its power stroke. Therefore, a power stroke occurs every half revolution of the crankshaft, making for smooth, steady rotation of the crankshaft. The cylinders fire in this order. One, four, three, two. At one end of the crankshaft is a gear which drives the camshaft. The camshaft gear with which it meshes has twice as many teeth as the crankshaft gear so that the camshaft turns at half crankshaft speed. Of course the function of the camshaft is to open the valves. Each cylinder normally has two cam lobes, 
one to open the intake valve, and the other to do the same for the exhaust valve for that cylinder. Because the cylinders in a Volkswagen are 180 degrees opposed, one cam lobe can perform the same function for two opposing cylinders. Valves are controlled through a linkage of cam followers, push rods, and rocker arms. When the lobe, or high point of the cam, contacts the cam follower, the push rod moves with it and lifts one end of the rocker arm which, through lever action, depresses the other end, which is in contact with the valve stem. The valve is spring-loaded, so it is normally closed. But when the rocker arm pushes down on the stem, it overcomes the spring tension and opens the valve. As soon as the cam rotates off its high point, the spring tension is strong enough to close the valve. Therefore, by the position of the cam lobes, or high points, on the camshaft, each valve is made to open and close at precisely the most desirable point in the four-stroke sequence. This could be called mechanical programming. Because of the mechanical linkage, the valve must open when the cam tells it to. Up to now, we have assumed that the intake and exhaust valves open at top dead center and bottom dead center. But this is not the case. These two circles represent two complete revolutions of the crankshaft, or one four-stroke cycle. When the piston is three quarters of the way down on the power stroke, combustion pressures have dropped to the point where there is little power left. It is more advantageous to give the exhaust gases as much time to leave the cylinder as possible. So the exhaust valve opens at 45 degrees before bottom dead center on the power stroke, remains open throughout the exhaust stroke, and doesn't close until 5 degrees after top dead center on the intake stroke. However, the intake valve opens slightly ahead of top dead center. So there is a very brief time when both intake and exhaust valves are open, at the end of the exhaust and beginning of the intake. Likewise, the intake valve is left open until the compression stroke is well underway, to give as much time as possible for the fuel-air mixture to flow into the cylinder. The compression stroke and power stroke are completed with both valves closed, until it is time to open the exhaust valve again. As we have seen, cams are shaped to open and close the valves in a precise timing sequence. Of course, it is very important that the gears between the crankshaft and camshaft are properly mated. Correct alignment is indicated by marks on the gear teeth. Misalignment by even one tooth would mean that valve timing would be ahead or behind by 14 degrees and would seriously reduce engine performance, increase harmful emissions, and reduce engine life. Obviously, once the camshaft gear has been properly installed, valve timing as such will not change. However, other factors can affect the timing, principally valve gap otherwise called valve clearance or valve lash. This is the total spacing between the rocker arm and the valve stem. The clearance on engines manufactured after November 1964 should be 0 0.15 millimeter or 0 0.006 inches when the engine is cold. The correct valve gap for the car should appear on a label on the fan housing. The spacing is most conveniently measured between the valve stem and the rocker arm. A valve is a simple looking thing, but it takes quite a beating in doing its work. Here is a cross section of a Volkswagen valve, showing the head, the margin, and the face. The face is the surface that contacts the valve seat 
and must make a perfect seal for utmost engine efficiency. The stem slides up and down in the valve guide, which is an insert in the cylinder head. The intake valve is slightly larger than the exhaust valve and stays relatively cool because it only has to pass the fuel-air mixture. But the exhaust valve is another matter. It must pass the hot exhaust gases and can become red hot during normal operation. Therefore, the exhaust valve is made of special steel alloys. Both valves are cooled through two heat sinks. As the valve contacts its seat, here in the face, the majority of its heat is dissipated into the cylinder head. And the valve guide absorbs heat from the stem. So we can see that proper seating of the valve is essential to its life. And the time that a valve is on its seat also strongly influences its life. If the valve is unevenly seated, two things happen. First, there is less area of contact for the heat to be passed to the valve seat. Further, uneven contact may mean that hot exhaust gases will leak between the valve face and seat in some places. These higher temperatures greatly shorten valve life as the hot spots wear away more quickly. In the following sequence of drawings, we can see why an improper valve gap can seriously affect valve timing and engine performance. For one thing, the engine must operate when it is cold and when it is hot. Metal expands with heat and contracts with cold, but not all parts expand or contract at the same rate. Allowances must be made for these variations. In addition, valve gap adjustments become necessary from time to time because of wear between valve faces and seats, wear on valve stem ends, wear on push rods and rocker arms, and even stretching of the valve stem, which is under tension by the valve spring. Let's take some extreme examples to illustrate the importance of proper clearance. Here, the intake and exhaust valves have no clearance when cold. As soon as the car is started, the engine will begin to warm up and the valves will expand faster than the cylinder head. During this time, the intake valve will not completely close. There will be a loss of compression and a loss of power because the fuel-air mixture can escape during compression and power strokes. In addition, the unburned fuel that escapes through the exhaust port will cause emission problems. Both valves will run hotter because they are subjected to hot exhaust pressure for a longer period and are not on their seats for a long enough time to dissipate their heat. And valve timing will obviously be off because the valves are open for a longer period of time. Now, Let's look at the opposite situation. Valve gap is twice the recommended amount. The rocker arm must travel an additional 0.15 millimeter before contacting the valve stem. The most obvious effect will be the extra noise as the rocker arms slap against the valve stems. But much more harmful to the engine and to emission control is the fact that now the valves do not fully open and they are not open long enough. The result is, there is not enough time for the fuel-air mixture to enter the cylinder, especially at full throttle. Compression is lower, and power is lost. The exhaust does not have enough time to be fully eliminated, so the valves run hotter, and there is less room in the cylinder for fuel-air mixture. The extra distance the rocker arms travel means they hit the valve stems harder and will eventually pound them out of shape. As stated earlier, adjusting the valves is not a difficult job at all. The engine must be cold when valve clearance is checked. Remove the distributor cap 
and turn the engine by hand until the smaller side of the rotor points to the mark on the distributor housing. The notch in the pulley should be lined up with a split in the crankcase. The object is to have the piston of the cylinder being adjusted at top dead center of its power stroke so that both valves are closed. Valves are adjusted in cylinder order one, two, three, four. So first remove the valve cover for cylinders one and two. Insert the 0.15 millimeter blade of the feeler gauge between the rocker arm and valve stem. Press on the push rod end of the rocker arm to ensure that all play between the rocker arm, push rod, and cam is taken up. Valve clearance is properly adjusted if the gauge can be slid between the adjusting screw and stem smoothly. If it slides too easily or must be forced, an adjustment is necessary. Loosen the lock nut of the adjusting screw and turn the screw until you have the proper feel. One way to check out how a proper setting feels is to set a micrometer at 0.15 millimeters and slip the feeler gauge through the gap. When the setting is right, carefully tighten the lock nut. Now, be sure and recheck to see that the screw did not move during tightening. If it did, readjust. Now, turn the engine over by hand, counterclockwise, one half revolution of the pulley. The rotor will turn 90 degrees. After checking number two cylinder, proceed in the same manner with number three and number four, rotating the pulley counterclockwise 180 degrees each time. Each time, the rotor will move counterclockwise 90 degrees. When the adjustments have been completed, check the valve cover gaskets to be sure they are in good condition. If not, replace the valve cover with new gaskets. Be sure and clean the cover with solvent first. Run the engine for a few minutes, and then check for leaks in the gaskets and replace if necessary. We have seen that improper valve clearance can cause burning of valves and valve seats, distortion of valves, poor performance, rough engine running, change in exhaust emission, noisy timing mechanism, and changed valve timing. And all this can be avoided by proper maintenance. Proper maintenance is the responsibility of three people, the service advisor, who diagnoses the trouble, the mechanic, who is assigned the repair order, and of course the owner, because if he doesn't bring his car into the shop, you can't fix it. And the better you fix it, the happier your customer will be.